So the next uh, the next idea here that, that we're going to talk about is this idea of a subset. Right? And, and I've got the mass definition here. A set A is a subset of another if every element of A is also, yeah, okay. Um, in kind of plain English, think of subset as meaning contained in. All right, so A is a subset of B is the same as A is contained in B. And you see the notation here, right? I, I have this little kind of sideways U, right? That is our symbol for a subset. All right, so let's look at some examples. Let me clean up my scribbling. There we go. So look, look at these sets here. I'll, I'll give you a minute to kind of look through and think about them. I want to I want to talk about which sets are subsets of other ones on the list, right? And remember, by subset we mean contained in. All right, so I'm looking I'm looking at D here, right? I I, I kind of look at the smaller ones to see if the smaller ones are contained in the larger ones. Every number on this list is also on this list. All right, that means D is a subset of C. All right, we, we also, every element on, on the D list is also on the A list. All right, so I could also say D is a subset of A. Okay, now I, I want to go a little bit further. Right? Look, at, look at A and C. All right, every number on the A list is also on the C list. That means that A is a subset of C. But okay, wait, wait a minute. These, these two are, are a little unusual, right? It goes the other way. Every element on the C list is also on the A list, which means that not only is A a subset of C, but C is a subset of A. Right, and this is actually kind of a special relationship. When A is a subset of C and C is a subset of A, that means that A and C are equal. And you see that is the case here. Right? They both have exactly that same list, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so let's let's try another one. Um, is set B a subset of anything on there? Well, some of the numbers in B are in A, but not all of them. And, and to be contained in it, it's a completely contained in thing, right? That's that's not good enough. What, what I do notice here is that everything on the E list is also on the B list. So I would say E is a subset of B. Now, we've got one more special case here, right? How about this empty set, right? What, where, how does the empty set fit in here? Okay, there, there's a rule, right? The empty set is a subset of every set, right? So I would say that F is a subset of A F is a subset of B, F is a subset of C, all of them, D and E as well, right? The empty set is a subset of every set. Okay, now, now we're going to change this up just a little bit, right? Now I have this idea of a proper subset, right? A is a proper subset of A if, uh, excuse me, A is a proper subset of B if first, a is contained in B. That part hasn't changed. And the two sets are not equal. Right? The two sets are not equal. You notice we, we've got the notation here, and it's just a little bit different. All that's missing is that line that was under the under that subset symbol. Right? So that that's the difference. This is a subset, and this is a proper subset subset. Okay, so how, how does that work down here? Well, E is not only a subset of B, which we saw on the last slide, 
E is also a proper subset of B, right? Because uh, E is contained in B, but E is not equal to B. All right, so in this case, it, it's both. It's a subset and a proper subset. Okay, so how about um, the, the one where it gets weird, A and C? All right, we saw that A was a subset of C because A is contained in C. However, the two of them are equal. All right, so that means that A is not, I'm going to put a line through, right? Use our usual symbol for not. A is not a proper subset of B. Another way to look at it, B would have to have at least one element that A doesn't, right? Looking, looking at E and B again, B has the number 8 where E doesn't. Right? That's another way of looking at why it is a proper subset. Okay, so how about... How about counting? How many subsets does a set have? Right? Well, let, let's see. How, how can we count these? I, I've got three sets here. Right? What, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start. I'm going to start off by being very brute force. I'm just going to list them all. Right? I'm, I'm going to do this and uh, apply some of our problem-solving concepts. See if I can find a pattern. All right. So let, let's start this first one. What are the subsets of set A? Well, first. I'm going to be methodical about this. How many subsets of size zero are there? Well, there, there's just one. There's the empty set. So let, let me label this here, right? This is the size, subset size. How many subsets of size one are there? Well, there's just this one, the set itself. And, and that's it, right? That's all of them. So if I add all of these up, I get two subsets. Okay, well that, that was nice. Let's, let me actually put the set. So let's not put one. One actually lists the set. So we'll put the empty set there. Okay, right, how about set B? Well, set B, again, has this one subset of size zero. It has two subsets of size one. It's got the set one and the set two. And now, now I got to go up a notch, right? How many subsets of size two are there? Well, there, there's just the set itself, one comma two. So what's my total here? I've got a total of four subsets. So let me circle these so we can keep track of my final answers. All right, so let's try one more. How about this set C? Well, it's got the empty set just like the others. It's got sets of size one. That's going to be one two and three how about sets of size two now here we have to start to be a little careful uh it's got one and two one and three and two and three and that's it now remember that the size the the order doesn't matter so the set two comma three and the set three comma two they're the same thing all, all i care about is is membership not not the order they're in all right now what, what am i left with sets of size three that is the set itself and that's all of them if we add them up i get one two three four five six seven eight okay look for patterns right what are the sizes of my original set here this cardinality of A is 1, the cardinality of B is 2, and the cardinality of C is 3. Do you see a pattern? Right? How about if I rewrite the numbers this way? How about if I make this one 2 to the 1st, this one 2 squared, and this one 2 to the 3rd? Now are you seeing a pattern? Right? The, the size of the set always becomes... The exponent and that's going to be my formula right if the cardinality of a set is m then there are two to the m power subsets right so let, let's let's test this out because i did leave a set out here that, that i could have put out here at the beginning 
I could have started off with, I mean, I did set of size one, two, and three. Well, there's a set of size zero, right? The empty set is a set of size zero. So if, if I squeeze that in over here, right, let me clean this up. So let, let me let me squeeze that in. Let D equal the empty set. Does this fit our pattern? All right, well, the cardinality of D is zero. Two to the zero power is one. And yes, look at that. The only subset of the empty set is the empty set itself. There's just one. It worked. And you're, you're welcome to try this out again. If you, if you want to make another set, let E be the set with the numbers one, two, three, and four. And if you try writing out all of the subsets again, you should come out to two to the fourth. That's 16. All right, so th this is an area, this idea of subsets versus elements. The students sometimes get confused. All right, so I've got four statements here. Two of them are true. Two of them are not. All right, two of them are not. So the, the, the first thing I, I want you to just get firmly in your head, okay? In order for me to say A is a subset of B, A must be a set, right? It has to be a set. So look at the, look at the second item on my list here. Right, look at this one. One is not a set, right? Because it's not a set, it can't be a subset of something. So this statement is false, right? This statement down here, the last one, this is the true one. This is the set whose sole element is one, right? And that set is contained in this set, right? So that is a true statement. Okay, now let, let's look at element, right? The elements of a set must come from the list, right? So if, you, if, if I write this out, right, I do the roster format here. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One is on that list. Therefore, this is a true statement. All right, now look, look down here at, at number three. And th this is one of these situations where you need to be extremely literal. Looking back up at my list, right, that I wrote up here on the first line. Do you see anything in that list that looks like this? Exactly like that, brackets and all, right? I'm not seeing that. There, There is no, th th this is a set of numbers. It's not a set of sets. So this one is a false statement. I right? really kind of a fine distinction there, but it's an important one, right? The elements of a set are the things that are on the list Right? To be a subset of a set, something has to itself be a set. Right? Two, two important distinctions. 